sins against you, go out, point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen <coughs> even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile, a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. If two of you agree on earth about anything, you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Cindy, could you bring me a glass of water? Thanks. Not scotch and water, just water. Okay. Well, I said you should pay attention to the, uh, the prayer of the day that remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. That, uh, that undergirds the sermon this morning. Thanks, Judy. I'm going to draw from Ezekiel and from Paul's letter a little bit. Um, so. so here's the story. My mom used to like to tell the story about pilots who would fly at night over the Midwest, you know, Minnesota and the Dakotas and Iowa and all that, fly over that part of the country at night. The pilots would report seeing thousands and thousands of tiny little lights all over the, the ground, uh, almost as if they had turned upside down to match all the stars up in heaven. They thought it was fascinating. But there was a mystery to this, too, that they couldn't quite figure out. It seemed as they were flying through the night sky, at a certain moment, all the stars on the ground would go out. And the ground would be plunged back into darkness. It's as if somebody just hit a switch and all the states went dark. It took a while to figure out what was happening. What would your guesses be? Hmm? What? No, they were, they were farm lights and small town lights. It seems that all these farm sites and all these little towns were listening to the news, weather, and farm report on WCCO radio in Minneapolis, and when the program was over, everybody turned out the light and went to bed. <laughs> yeah. The point is this. There was a time when most of us got our news and weather and those things important to us from one or two places, like WCCO. We listened to a, key, a few key voices as well. But you and I know that those days are long gone, right? Well, keep that in mind as we look at the lessons. So I want to start with one key mantra that we hear all the time these days. And then I'm going to try to give you a new one for you to hold on to from this day forward, right? So, first one. If I say, if you see something you would respond with, say something. Yeah, pretty basic. Seems to me that we never heard that phrase, if ever or hardly at all, before 9-11 and that disaster. And ever since, we hear it all the time. If you see something potentially, yeah, there you go. You got it. <laughs> if you see something potentially disastrous, you say something. Why is that? Why, why would you say something? What are you trying to prevent? Another disaster. Something bad from happening, right? 
If you see something, say something so that something can be done to change it. Okay. It's a current phrase. It's also a very old sentiment. If you were listening to that Ezekiel lesson about 3,000 years ago, maybe not quite, you would hear God and Ezekiel having a question about that. God tells Ezekiel, if you hear something from me, you need to say that something as a warning to my people. Hear something, say something. If you do that and the folks don't listen, they're in trouble. If you don't do that, you're in bigger trouble than they are, is what God said to Ezekiel. So Ezekiel is to be a sentinel, kind of on guard duty for God. He's to be a truth teller. Right? If he didn't speak up, trouble all around. And if he spoke up faithfully but wasn't listened to, well, trouble for those who like their ears closed instead of open. So, in short, Ezekiel was to be that voice, that resource, that sentinel that informed God's people of God's will everywhere. See something, hear something, say something, right? It's good advice back then. It's probably still good advice these days as well. But here's the thing. Who are the sentinel ears and eyes and voices that God is raising up for you and me? Whose voice do you pay attention to these days? You know, we don't all get our important information from one radio station anymore or even just a few familiar voices, right? Or maybe we do, and that's part of the problem. We only listen to a few, right? To be clear, God is never without a voice on our behalf. So if a sentinel's task is to warn us to turn, to turn around, to change for good, what's our task? To listen. To listen carefully, to listen faithfully, and then to respond by resisting What's bringing harm? That makes sense, right? Okay. But what complicates it, what complicates things for us these days is the challenge of trying to figure out which voices are calling out real danger that we need to pay attention to and which voices are crying wolf when there is no wolf at the door. What do you think? How do you do that sorting out, right? Maybe we could think about it in, in these areas in this way. Think about this. And here's the new mantra coming pretty soon. So if every nation is made up of communities and every community is made up of neighbors, how about leaning into this new mantra, this new way of looking things from the second lesson that says simply, Love does no harm to a neighbor. In our community life together as church, as a nation, who do you listen to? Community life is also known as politics, right? Life in city, life in community. When choices are running between democracy and theocracy and fascism, who has your ear? Right? Or in the area of science and medicine with its concerns, maybe again, for masks and vaccinations and social distancing, whose voices have your attention? Would it help you if you remembered that love does no harm to a neighbor? Again, I think God is certainly and persistently raising up all kinds of loud, sentinel voices about the environment. You might expect that from a God of creation, the God who created creation, we believe. If we listen to those voices, so much the better. If we don't, so much the worse for everyone. If we don't listen, 
And if we don't change, could it be that we have not yet learned again that love does no harm to a neighbor? You know, the Bible lesson says that God is not silent, that God is not disengaged from our daily life and our daily challenges, that God does raise up sentinel voices to challenge us, to warn us, always to turn us around. Those voices listen, they watch, they learn, they warn. And our task again is to listen, to weigh such warnings, and then to respond in ways that are faithful, not only for our own sake, but for the sake of whom? Our neighbor, right? So, a couple other things on what voice do you hear? When women's health and reproductive and contraceptive rights are stripped away, are you remembering that the love you are to have for every neighbor is to do them no harm? Or in this big argument about gun safety versus gun rights, as a person of faith amidst a country with so many mass shootings, do you choose, to res do you choose the response that does your neighbor the least harm? Or when it comes to LGBTQIA issues that some of your family, that some of your friends are dealing with every day, do you listen to politicians or do you listen to parents? Are you remembering that the all in your signs, church signs, all are welcome? That the all in all our welcome signs includes every neighbor to whom you are to do no harm. God is not silent. God is not distant or disengaged. God sent no voices come from the faith community, hopefully, right, pastors and others, but they aren't limited to us. God is so much bigger than we imagine. It is God's world, after all, not just God's churches, right? Now, in the midst of all this, in Ezekiel, the cry goes out, in the midst of all our brokenness, how can we live? Clearly, not the way we've been living in so many areas. Now, the lesson says that if we don't listen to the voices who hear, to the eyes that see, to the lips that speak warning in hopes of change, we will all waste away. The seeing, hearing something sentinels are all around us. God sees to that. Now, here's the good news because that all sounds like a warning. This is the good news. As we are turned back by God's grace, as we are turned away from those things that bring us harm, God's gospel promise stands tall and strong. God says in that lesson, I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, no matter how broken. So turn around. People, turn around. My people, turn around and live. So what's this sermon about in a paragraph? Remember always and in all ways, love does no harm to a neighbor. Say that with me. Love does no harm to a neighbor. And everyone is our neighbor. And the world is the only neighborhood we have to live in together. Well, as a possible sentinel, those are the words that I heard in these lessons this morning and the words that I've told you about. What have you heard? What are you seeing? And then what faithful neighborly changes will you make before all the lights go out. Amen. Amen. Peace of God, which does pass our understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.
Amen.